Welcome to Business for Health, hosted on the Nielsen Network. I'm Giselle Wertheim Ames for Longevity. Today, I'm speaking again to Professor Shai Frati. He's the head for the, for the Cycle Center for Hyperbaric Oxygen Research at the University of Tel Aviv in Israel. Professor Shai Frati and his team have been working with hyperbaric oxygen therapy for over a decade. Today, they publish in the Journal of Aging a groundbreaking study, which shows for the first time in human beings, cellular level improvement achieved in healthy adults using the specific hyperbaric oxygen therapy or HBOT protocols. And why the study is so fascinating really is that it shows the improvement at a cellular level, that is in telomere length shortening and the accumulation of senescent cells both of which are the biological hallmarks of aging and can be reversed. These are studies on humans, not mice, and the results of which are really going to alter the way in which we see, for, for example, the brain aging and also allowing people who have access to hyperbaric oxygen therapy to really improve their longevity and their ability to live healthier, longer and more productive lives. So Professor Frati, this is the first time human study which shows the reversal in biology of aging, telomere shortening and senescent cell accumulation, which you're going to explain to me in layman's terms, <laughs> using hyperbaric oxygen therapy. This is obviously a therapy that you have been researching for over a decade now um, at your center in Tel Aviv. Can you explain why the specific study is so important in the biology of aging. As you know, and as you mentioned, indeed this part of our ongoing research that we are doing for something like a decade that is focusing as aging as a disease, looking at aging as a disease. And in the previous study that was published something like six months ago, we were focus, focusing on, on the organ, on the most important organ on our body, which is, which is the brain, okay? And we were able to demonstrate that indeed with the specific protocol that we are using, we can generate new blood vessels in the brain and generate new neurons. And accordingly, the cognitive function was improving. In this specific study, we are diving deeper. We are diving to the cellular mechanism that is related to aging. And there are two major helmets of aging and that we call telomere and senescent cell. And I will explain because it was a bit complicated. Okay, when, when the cell is replicating, we have two leads of DNA that are being separated and matched by a, a new lead. And that's how we get two new cells, two cells with two DNAs. In order to protect the core of the DNA during that splitting and matching process, there is bumpers at the tip of the DNA. Whoever created us was genius. He wanted to protect the DNA. So these are the bumpers. These bumpers, we call them telomere. And anytime the cell is replicating, the telomere are shrinking. They get a hit and they are sh shrinking, something like 20 to 40 bases per year. Once the telomere are shrinking to a certain level, then the cell cannot replicate anymore. It's stuck. This is an aging malfunctioning cell that then later on can accumulate mutation and become a cancer cell. So the core of the biology of aging at the cellular level is the telomere and the development of senescent cell. In this study, for the first time in humans, we can demonstrate that not we are slowing the expected decline, that we can actually reverse the core of the aging process. We can elongate the telomere and accordingly the amount of the senescent cells are declining. This is huge because it means that we can actually reverse aging, not slowing it down. And that's open a no, totally new area and hope for people who are targeting aging as, as a disease, that we want to target it, that we want to reverse it. 
Just like we are measuring blood pressure. We can measure it, we can change it. We can measure the telomere, and indeed, we find out that we can actually reverse it. Professor Farty, how long would it take to enable that reversal? So how, how long does a person have to be, in terms of your study, under treatment for? And then how long-lasting are those effects? The treatment that we gave was three months, okay? So in three months, we see more than 20% elongation of the telomere, which is, which is huge, okay? And people at the end of the study, of course, they are sitting in front of me, terrified, asking me what will happen now. And I always tell them, relax, now you are aging again. Of course, that after the treatment, there we will age again, the telomere will shrink in will be shortened again. And that depends, of course, on what you eat, doing exercise, not doing exercise, smoking, diabetes, all of this, what we call risk factor for a deterioration along age. However, since we can measure it, we can evaluate it, it six months, one year after, and see where it is. If it's shrinking to a certain degree, then we have something that we can take it out. Again, just like blood pressure. Okay, we have a biomarker, which is the blood pressure, and we can find a specific drug combination that can reverse that. So by have biological markers that tell us what happens on the cellular level and having intervention that can actually reverse it, we are facing probably a new arena in everything related to the to the research of the aging process. It's not only research, we have applicable things to do with it. So this is really, you know, and that is the significant breakthrough. I think we read a lot in media about what we can do to keep ourselves younger and our brains younger, particularly our brains and which uh, vitamins there are, say, or supplementation or lifestyle habits we can change. And there is a growing interest in this area. Now, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, how accessible is it? Because if you just do a cursory look out there, you know, you can you can see that. I mean, I could go and walk into to some arbitrary place and actually have some of this therapy, but is this the therapy that your research is based on? So this I'm I'm glad that you brought it up because what we are doing in this study and the other studies is not it's not the sacks, it's not the monoplaces that people sell over or use all over and they are claiming this is hyperbaric oxygen therapy with the FRATI protocol and all of this. No, it's not that. What we are doing is people are going into multiplex chamber, compressing the chamber with air, increasing the oxygen to predefined high level and then doing a fast decline and doing it every 20 minutes, it's a certain protocol that took us something like 20 years to investigate and find and optimize. This is not, I'm saying again, this is not the sacs that are being inflated with oxygen. It's the fluctuation with the specific protocol that we generate that actually triggers the genes that are responsible for all, all the things that we see. So unfortunately, it's still not fully accessible, but there are some clinics who have already adapted everything we are doing and are affiliated for us. For example, there is a center already operating in Florida, in the villages in Florida. It's a high-end center doing everything we are doing over here. The physician, the nurse were trained over here. A center is going to soon, in two or three months from today, will be fully operating also in Dubai, an additional center around the world. The important thing is not to be misled by, by SACs, monoplaces, home use, what they call hyperbaric. It's not that. And it's important, especially in those days where there is co-infection risk and you risk of inhaling stuff that are not in high quality, you should take care of your health. It's unfortunately not accessible all over. There is a center in Florida, in Dubai, in the UK, there will be soon. Take care of your health and don't go to a garage that you know that the people who work there are not, don't know what to do with your car. So, so it's sure, I mean, it's, it sounds logical if you're going to start fiddling with oxygen levels in your brain, but anyway, well, to me anyway. 
Um, and it's, I mean, it's, a, it's obviously, it's a very interesting therapy and with all things when it comes to anti-aging, if there's a quick fix, the human, the human tendency is to go for it. But let's maybe now just talk a little bit about the, 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 the subjects in your study, humans, not mice. And I think that was also a you know, very interesting point is a lot of anti-aging studies um, have been done on mice. And this has always been the big challenge um, because um, I think you yourself have told me we are not mice. <laughs> But the study was done on health, what you called healthy humans, the healthy human subjects um, in an age range. Can we maybe just talk about that specifically? So uh, first of all, you know, who would qualify you know, to get a good result out of hyperbaric oxygen therapy and who wouldn't? So what we have done in this study is we took what we call normal aging population, people who are 65 years or older, Healthy, functioning, uh, no stroke, no cardiac event, nothing like that. Us, okay? We took ourselves into that, that study and we were able to demonstrate on this specific population that indeed we can reverse the core biology of the aging process. I must say that in mice and rats, as you mentioned, we can reverse Alzheimer and we can reverse everything with our protocol. But unfortunately in human beings, when we are reaching to a point where we already have, for example, Alzheimer, then unfortunately we don't have brain. We don't have anything to save. The brain is in, in full atrophy. So in order to treat aging, and in order to use the method that we develop, you need to start earlier. You need to start when you still have some tissue to repair. Because if you don't have any tissue, then unfortunately we cannot generate or implant new tissue, at least not in that stage. I don't know what will happen 10 years from today, but at least in that stage. So if you want to take care, if you want to treat Alzheimer, or treat the age-related function and decline, you need to start it when you still have function, when you still have tissue that can be repaired. Uh, you can think about it, for example, if you're driving a car and you want to take care of your engine, you should do it before the engine is burst out on, on fire or it's totally lost. You need to start it and do the maintenance for that engine when the still there is an engine that you can treat, clean, put the new oils and things like that. So it's exactly like this. Dementia, Alzheimer, it's too late. We need to start earlier. Just my final question is, like, this is, I mean, this is such an exciting development and I know the results are, your, your study is published in Aging and it's going to be peer reviewed, um, or it is peer reviewed, sorry, but it will be subject obviously to scientific scrutiny further. For the average person now in the street, um, you know, when it comes to aging, Shai, what does this study, how do you think this will impact um, the entire industry of aging? Because surely it, it has to have some, some ripple effect. It's, it's a real breakthrough. Yeah, so it's indeed a great breakthrough because for, again, for the first time in, me, in humans, we see elongation of the telomere. Now elongation and the telomere just to, to be clear to everybody, it's not that I'm feeling better, I'm looking better. It's measurable. You are looking at the DNA, you are counting the sequence, and, and you see it's elongation of the telomere. It's a clear cut. It's, it's measurable, okay? So I hope that since we see that in humans, since we can see that we can actually reverse the biology of aging in humans, that will bring, first of all, New hope to many of us who wants to continue functioning a long age, and we are not taking the age-related functional decline for granted. And I hope that it will be a significant attraction for young scientists who see now that indeed the biology can be reversed, that aging is not taken for granted, that they will build their career, scientific career and research on how we are reversing the age-related functional decline. And to my, to my perspective, the age-related functional decline is the, one, the, the number one threat to the Western society. It's something that is worth the effort 
wolf, the, the brains, the good brains of the young kids who are the young scientists who are developing now. And I hope that that will bring a shift or more shift to this important research arena. Thank you very much for your time, Professor Frati. I look forward to speaking to you again in the coming months. I'm sure there'll be some new developments. Thank you.